in today, what can he do to make adjustments from last year? Well, I know already he's uh, worked with his swing. Uh, Tim Hires um, and Peter uh, flew out to see him and, and to work out with him some. Uh, he's in better shape. I don't know physically if you guys have really looked at him, but for me, he's in better shape. I know he <clears throat> he comes to spring training realizing he needs to be heavy because he always loses weight and he doesn't want to get too, you know, too thin. But um, but I, but this year he came lighter. Uh, hopefully we can keep the weight on him. But I think that's going to help his running. Um, it, it'll help everything. The, the better shape you're in. I know it's hard sometimes thinking you have to come heavy because you're going to lose weight, but it's probably not the ideal way to go about it. He says he wanted to be a bit more selective. Um, yeah, I think he could be a little more selective. I think he's, I mean, I think he's pretty selective anyway, but when he starts chasing out of the zone, I know that bothered him last year because he is, um, he is a guy that's um, pretty disciplined at the plate. He'll take his walks. He'll get deep in counts. Uh, and I know he chased a lot more pitches than he wanted to last year. So, um, so all of that, um, you know, I, it still comes down to this confidence thing that when you're, when you're good and you're coming up there and you know you're going well, you see your vision is better. You see the ball better and you don't chase as much. And then when you're scuffling, you're not sure, do I be more patient? Do I be more aggressive? And then things start going wider and and up and down and wide, and, and it gets difficult. How so nice would it be to have a veteran presence like Moreland back mm -hmm. with the team? Yeah, Mitch is, uh, is certainly important to what we do, important in his leadership role, but also important what he does on the field. Last year we started poorly, but um, I don't know how many games it was, but I would say four or five out of the first like, like wins we had, Mitch won those games for us. So. <coughs> You know, so I think he's huge when he's out there. His numbers are really good. He's dangerous. He gets big hits for you. Uh, we just, you know, he's not going to play 140 games anymore. Ron, how that uh, confidence when it comes to a guy like Freddie Freddy, Freddy you mentioned that he kind of started out sort of down on himself a little bit. How, how, how hard is that to help a guy when it comes to going through that mental battle and just kind of keep going through the motions? Well, I, I think that's, you know, the, always the question with the coaching staff is when a guy loses confidence, how do you get it back? I mean, how do you, it's hard. It, I mean, as great as Mookie was, Mookie was always like, oh, I can't hit anymore. You know, he goes 0 for 4, I can't hit anymore. And it's always a battle. So I think the great ones, you know, they're in these short slumps and I, I don't know why they're so much shorter. I mean, obviously they're more talented, but I mean, you know, Tony Gwynn, if he, if he went one or two games without a hit, it was like, it was a big slump for him. And, and he would get back out of it. The bad hitters, m myself, it may be two weeks instead of two days. Uh, so, but it's all, it was all up here. I, I, when I was pressing and I had to get a hit, I wasn't very good. And, and yet there were times when I went up there and, and minor leagues I didn't have so much issues, but in the big leagues there was times I went up there and when, when I felt confident, I hit. And I, it didn't seem to matter who was pitching. You just, you felt good. You knew when you got that pitch in the zone that you weren't going to miss it. And it's, um, it, but it's, it's been going on forever, and it's really difficult to figure out which is the best way to go about it. Ron, how do you envision using Chavis equally between first and second in a platoon with Mitch? What, what do you see for him? Oh, well, certainly with, uh, with some of the platoon at first. Um, but because he's such a good offensive player and for putting him in defensively at second base, really basically learning how to play second in the big leagues, I thought he did a really good job at second base. So we're not going to hesitate putting him at second. When, he, when he's swinging the bat well, uh, he's going to get more playing time, whether, we, whether it's out first or second. But he's going to be out there. When he's, when he's performing the way he can, you know, like when he first came up last year, uh, he was so hot and you wanted him. Wherever it was, you wanted him in the lineup. The splits are a little weird. Does that make it tough to get into a traditional platoon with Mitch at first? Um, yeah, I think it does. And I think, you know, your splits, when you look at a guy for the first year or two, he's in the big leagues, I think that's a little misleading. Um, you know, sometimes right off the bat, especially a left-handed hitter, right off you don't let him 
give him the opportunity to go out there and face lefties. So of course he's not going to be very good if he if he gets 400 at bats and 375 are off right-handers and only 25 off lefties. He's probably not going to be very good against the lefties. So um, so that's what you you battle with. You know how how much you play against that other side and and do you just let a guy go out there and hey you're gonna we we believe that in the future you're gonna hit that other side fine and just let him go out there. I guess it's kind of the same thing with a pitcher too. I mean there's these all these splits with pitchers, and it's like well if you don't let me face these guys I'm I'm not gonna get better, and and so you run into that. How equipped do you feel he is to deal with the way he was pitched last year? I know we talked a lot about the high fastballs and how he's been attacking it. How much better situated do you feel like he is to deal with that? Yeah, you're still still talking about Chavis. Yeah. Um, I guess the hardest thing, listen, nobody hits the fastball at the top of the zone. Maybe Bogey, great high fastball hitter, but there aren't many. And so if you're, if you're not really good at this pitch, which hardly anybody is, you really need to lay off of it. So it's more the discipline part of it is I, because most of those balls are high. The guys that like to pitch up out of the zone, they're usually high. They, they look good to a hitter. And by the time you start to swing, it's a ball. It's high. And not that the ball actually rises, but it appears that way when you're hitting. So I, th I think if we can get them disciplined to not chase it, pitchers have to come back into the zone. And when you're back into the zone with him, it gets dangerous. He's, um, he's got that much ability to drive balls. And, and whether it's off speed or, or fast balls, if, you know, you hang a, an off speed pitch to him, it's probably going to get hit pretty hard. Uh, Valdi with his bullpen, uh, he's always um, eye-opening when you watch him throw a bullpen. It just it just doesn't matter. You just you look at the velocity of that thing and it's incredible. Um, then he's got his cutter and he's you know and he's working on this thing and he's got the curveball and he's got all these weapons and you know uh, and we see it during the season when those weapons are put in places where they're close to where he wants them, he does not get hit. And then when he's bad, it's when, you know, he's got 0-2-1-2 and he leaves that split finger up or he leaves a breaking ball up uh, and he gets hit hard. So it's really, it's all about command with him. When he's commanding the baseball, we, you know, you have this fantastic pitcher. How about E-Rod? E-Rod? Uh, so um, he got, you know, he got back late last night from his uh, from his arbitration case. Drove over here, um, so I think he was a little bit kind of rushed in what he was doing. But uh, he's all about command. This guy has as good a command as anybody in the game. That's why he's so fast. You see, oh two one two on hitters, and that's why he's able to have the kind of year that he had. But you know, it was it was pretty good today. Um, he's going to continue to get, you know, to get locked in on the command. Um, but he's obviously a huge part in our rotation. And you know, I don't know if it's fair to say we want we need the same year from him, but um, but he's certainly capable of having that same year. With the Baldy, how much did we see last year? Did it look like after he came back from the surgery that the com the command was a struggle to get the fastball? You know, where it needed to be. Right. Yeah, after, after surgeries, that's the hardest thing when you come back. Is you, he's coming back in the middle of the season trying to compete again, whereas if you have it somewhere where you have an all, a whole off season to recuperate and now you get a spring training to get through it, it your command's going to be better. So, uh, so he struggled with the command when he came back, and, and uh, as you kind of expect a guy to do, even though you have great stuff, um, these guys, these big league hitters now, you make mistakes and they hit it pretty hard. Right now, will Martin Perez be your fourth starter, and who will be your fifth starter? Yeah, we don't have somebody yet for that fifth spot. I think um, I think Martin is, um, you know, we. I don't want to say I want to pencil in anybody, but but I think we're pretty comfortable in him being that fourth starter, and and then we'll figure out the fifth. And um, you know, I know you asked me yesterday whether it was going to be an opener or not, and it could be. Uh, but it could be, you know, Weber, or it could be the other guys that we've brought in from other organizations, and and uh, it's it's too early to try to figure that out. I think they'll pitch themselves into uh, spots, 
Um, I, don't, I think the veteran guys, you, that's not fair to them. I w I, they need to pitch to just get ready for opening day. So we don't need um, any of our guys trying to make a team early. The, the four starters that we feel like are going to be in that spot. Chris good again uh, yesterday playing catch. Um, so and he feels good still. Uh, continues to get better. He'll come in uh, probably later uh, t tomorrow. We, we still don't really want him around people until our doctors have seen him. They evaluate him, and I know he's hoping we tell him, hey, why don't you stay here? But we'll see what the doctors say. Ron, this might be a, a silly question, but where's your son Chris? Uh, I don't really know that. I know, uh, I know he's somewhere in Naples. I don't, I don't know who he's playing catch with. I'm not sure. Um, but basically, it's catch. Uh, I know he's put more effort into it now. Um, but probably without a catcher, I don't know how much effort he can put into that. Yeah, it may, be in his, it may be in his backyard. I know I played catch in my backyard about two weeks ago, trying to get my arm ready for BP if they need me. <laughs> I think he, uh, and I may be wrong in this, but I, I think I heard that he was down here and he was off the mountain and was doing really well. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I always notice things because uh, at times when a pitcher goes out there and he's given up hits on pitches that you think are, are pretty good pitches, you always wonder, okay, where is that coming from? Is, um, you know, are the coaches picking up signs from the catcher? Are, is the pitcher tipping pitches? Uh, are they giving pitches from second base where they're, where they're picking up the catcher signs? Or in the glove, which has become a big thing lately, is now is those pitchers making sure they hide that glove, hides their hand from from the runners on second base. So, so I'm always watching that stuff, but I can't tell you that I saw one team versus another that that I thought, wow, it's way different than everybody else. Other than kind of the ramifications of Josh's new red sock, what was your reaction to how elaborate that scheme was once everything came out? Elaborate, who was? Uh, yeah, I, I you know I, I don't know I I know what was reported and what came out, but I don't really I don't really want to make any comments on that. Commissioner Manfred said he he could expect some more regulation on video in polls. Have you got any guidance yet on what that no. would be? What no, we don't have any guidance on it. We did, you know I've got the rule changes today and and looked at some of those quickly, but um, no, we don't have guidance. So we're we're going to meet. I think uh, Sunday we've got a meeting and. And then, uh, and then we'll. I, th I think Joe Torrey's coming in here later, and we'll get a better idea on exactly what's going on. On the other changes yesterday, the 20 second uh, review now. You right. Know, whether the decision was appropriate. Yeah, and it's not really on me. It's on J JT, whoever's on that phone, and um, trying to speed things up. I think is good in all areas. I, I know the only thing I hope it doesn't get to is that we have to make the decision what we see visually because uh, I pay attention to the game but I'm t paying attention to a lot of different things so say I'm walking down and maybe talking to one of our guys and there's a play that happens out there and I miss it I don't want to have to be just locked in on every single pitch um, because I think it makes makes it more difficult what we do to try to get everybody ready Ron, do three of that or minimum will that change the way you work guys in the bullpen and will it change the way you instruct the bullpen and the pitching staff? For sure, no no doubt about it. Um, we're fortunate that our left-handers are guys that get out anybody um, because they're, they're stuffed guys. So I, we won't have to worry about that, but absolutely you're going to set your bullpen different because of that rule change. Uh, they get the, the lefty, he only comes in and gets one out, out one lefty. It's gonna, going to be tough to find him a place in the roster where you know it'll still work. You know, you come in, he comes in with two outs, and, and he's got a tough lefty, absolutely that works. Um, or you got two out of three lefties, maybe then he, he comes in and is able to pitch to the two out of three. But um, unfortunately, that left-handed specialist, it's a little bit tougher to, to keep him on your roster. Get guys out and, and actually use guys in the 
Well, the, probably the good thing about that is um, you, you won't have too many times where you need to have, <laughs> you know, more multiple guys up. And then as soon as a guy comes in the game, that other guy's warming up because he knows he's got at least two more batters before he's in the game. So that part probably saves your bullpen a little bit of getting up, getting heated up, and then not getting not getting in games. Rag, it's it's a long story that I won't go into, but it came, <laughs> but it came from uh, back when I played with the Dodgers, and it came from our trainer Bill Bueller at the time. Um, it's, been it's been there for a long time, and it's sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. I get both of them, and I, I answer to both. So, <laughs> were you able to talk to uh, Adelia the other night? I did talk to Petey last night. Um, he's still sore. The knee is still sore, so the setback is still there. Um, he won't. He won't be here Monday, uh, and and he's just going to try to evaluate what happens here. Uh, he's going to continue to talk to um, the people in Arizona and and Brad here to figure out what the next step is and and where he goes from it. I know it's only been a couple of days, but what's the biggest difference to you from this rule now, you know, with these teams being able to get rest? Uh, uh, obviously, these sessions are are different. Um, I'm comfortable with it, so that's not that big a deal to me. But it's really, um, you know, I stayed just watching bullpens today. I usually never do that. Um, so, so we have three rounds of pitchers throwing bullpens. I wanted to see all of them, so I don't get over to the other fields where I'm used to either fielding ground balls to help out or wherever they need me, I help out. So that's quite different. Um, but it's, you know, it's still organizing and making sure everything's going smooth through the day trying to adjust to the little things that we see to make um, to make things um, make more sense. Uh, we're always trying to improve on that. And we don't like a lot of uh, downtime for these players. You know, it used to be when I played is, you, you know, you're out there standing for two hours just shagging, and then you finally go get the hit. And, it's, and so instead of those hours just being on your feet, uh, we're now trying to do it so we're actually working all the time. And, Get them out there, do your work, high energy, and then get them off the field. Ron, I, I know it's premature to make any conclusions about Dustin's future, but mm -hmm. he certainly has a lot to overcome, and who knows where right. this goes. Uh, is, is there a sadness to you that you've only seen him on the field nine times in the last yeah. two years, having seen what kind of player he is on the yeah. other side and not being able to you know, see him more play for you? Yeah, ab absolutely. He uh, he's a special player. I mean, it's not, and it's not just the MVP. It's it's just watching him the way he plays, um, the energy he brings to a team. Um, he's a great player too, but just doing things the right way, and playing the great defense, and getting on base, and and slapping the ball to right field when he needs to, and driving a ball when he needs to, and um, it was never comfortable on the other side. Um, you know, f having to face him, especially when, you know, games on the line and stuff, it's just, it's not comfortable. Um, so whenever you see a great player, um, age is different. When a guy just ages and then he's not as good, and that's, that, that part's easy to see, but not, not a guy that has an injury and because of it has not been able to perform. That, that part is really difficult. How much you appreciate the passion? Oh, well, yeah, and even when he came back, you know, last year and came back the year before just just having him around is huge i mean the energy level that he brings um, he is passionate about what he does in the game and he's feisty he's got a chip on his shoulder and all the things you like from a player he's got Thanks, Thank you. hey guys Thanks, <laughs>